When you're writing in Markdown, it's often very helpful to have a live preview of the text you're working on. And one of the best programs for this is called Mark2. Hi everyone, in this video we're going to review Mark2. We'll start with installation, and then I'll show you how you can get Mark2 to work with Pandoc to generate your citations, and then we'll show you how to preview a text. And then in the end, I'm going to show you how you can use Mark2 for some sort of next level Markdown stuff. Um, including a word processing program called Scrivener and a mind mapping program called iThoughts HD. Now, before we start, I just want to warn you that Mark II is an application that works for Mac only. So if you're a PC person, you are out of luck, but I encourage you to watch this video because it might just make you switch to Mac. So let's get started. Okay, beginning with installation, there are two ways to install the Marked app. The first is in the Mac App Store, and you can see that's what I have open here. And then the second way, which is the way I'm going to do it, is from their website. So I'll open up Firefox, and you can see I have it open to the Marked App website, and then I'll click on Free Trial. I'll save the file. And once the file's downloaded, I will open it. And from there, you take the Marked App and you drag it into your Applications folder. Now, I'm actually not going to do that because I already have the Mark app installed on my computer. In fact, if I scroll down, you can see here that it's in my dock. And I suggest you move it to your dock as well because it makes it a little bit easier to use. I'll show you the reason why. Let me close these windows. Also delete the installer. So what the Mark app does is it gives you a live HTML preview of the text file you're working on. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I take the text file I was working on in the last video and I drag and drop it onto the icon in the dock, the marked icon, you can see that I now have a live preview of my document. And you can see that the headers are lovely and formatted. And if I scroll down, you can also see that I have some words that I've italicized and they appear as italicized here. And if I wanted to, I could even change the preview style. So here I have it selected as GitHub, but for example, I could also put it as Let's try Upstanding Citizen. And you can see that it slightly changes the format. And then if I wanted to save or share this file as something else other than an HTML file, I would go down to Share, and it gives me lots of different options. PDF, rich text format, a word format, etc. So very quickly we can see that one of the benefits of Marked is that it allows you to see your text, and it allows you to quickly share it without having to go through the whole command line pandoc rigmarole. Now one thing you may have noticed is that I do have some references that I've written in the Pandoc style of Markdown, and they haven't been rendered. And the reason for that is that Marked is processing the text document just using regular multi-Markdown and not using Pandoc, which means if I want to generate the citations, I need to tell Marked to run it through Pandoc. And that's very simple. The first thing that I'll do is I'll open up the Preference pane for Marked. And I want you to make sure that you're in the Advanced tab. Then select Custom Processor, and check Enable Custom Processor. In the Pass field, I want you to add this text. And this simply tells Marked where it needs to look for the program Pandoc. And if you've installed Pandoc following the instructions that I gave you in the previous video, this is exactly where it should be. Now below Pass, in the Argument field, I want you to add the following text. Actually, you can't see it all here, so let's go back to the slideshow, and we can go over it bit by bit. So in order to get my plain text file in a format that Marked can read, I need to convert it to HTML. And I can do that using a command that's very similar to the one we used in the last video. For example, you can see that a lot of things here are similar to the command that we used previously. We have dash dash bibliography to tell Pandoc where to look for the bib file. We have the bib file included. We also have dash dash smart and dash dash normalize for formatting and we have dash s for standalone. However, there are a few different things here, and I want to go over them one by one, just so they're clear. First, we have dash f markdown, and that's simply telling Pandoc, I want you to convert this document from markdown. And then we have dash t html5, which is telling Pandoc, I want you to convert it to html. And then finally, I just want to note that I've included the entire file path for my bib file. And this is because technically, Pandoc is running in a directory that is not the desktop, is not the place where the test library is stored. Now, if you don't know the file path for your bib file, it's very easy. Just go to the bib file, right click, then hold down the option key, and select copy as file path. And then you can just paste it right in here. 
So this part of the command will look a little bit different on your computer than it does on mine. And so that, in a nutshell, is the command that you're going to pass pandoc to convert your text file into an HTML file that Marked can preview for you. So you might want to pause this video, write this all down in the args field, being sure that you've included the correct file path for your bib file. Back in the preferences for Marked, you can see that I've added the command that we just discussed into the args field. From there, I'll hit refresh. And then I'll just quit the application. And then I'll take the same text file and drag it back onto the Marked icon in the dock. And if I scroll down, you can see that my in-text citations have been properly formatted. And if I scroll to the end of the document, the references have also been added. And that's how you get Marked to work with Pandoc. And that way, you can have a live preview of any text document you're working on. I want to end this video showing you some things that you can do when writing in Markdown and using the application Marked that you can't do anywhere else. Now, these involve some other applications, and I'm not going to go into them in detail here. I just want to give you an idea of what's possible. So first, let me close this window. The first application I want to show you is called Scrivener. And Scrivener is a program for writers who are engaged in sort of large and complicated research and writing projects. One of the great features is it helps you divide your document into small little manageable chunks, as you can see here on the left. And then it has a lot of other features, which I won't go into. One of the special advantages of working with Scrivener is that it also works with Marked. So if I take the icon here in the Scrivener window and I drag it onto Marked, you can see that I get a full preview, and that preview has my citations, and then it also has my list of references. And that's because I've written my Scrivener document using Markdown syntax. Okay, let's close these windows. The second application I want to show you is called iThoughts HD, and it's a mind mapping application. And the file I have open here is a mind map or visual outline of the text that we've been working with in these videos. Let's zoom in here just so it's a little bit clearer. There are two things that I really like about this program. The first is that it lets me hyperlink to other files. And you can see that if I click on any of these blue titles, it'll open up a text document of notes that I've taken previously. And then I'm keeping it in another program called DevonThink. The other thing I like about this program is that for each node, you can also include notes. So if I click here on two dichotomies, you can see that I've also just included a little reminder note for myself. And the citation is in Markdown. Now, the reason that this is so convenient is that iThoughts HD also works with Marked. So if I drag this icon onto the Marked in my doc, you can see that I get, again, a full preview. And that preview includes two things. It includes the parenthetical citations that I included writing in Markdown. And it also includes hyperlinks to the original text files where I take my notes. And then for all the citations that I've included, it also gives me a list of references. And the reason I want to show you what's possible with an application like iThoughts HD or Scrivener is because it speaks to the versatility of Markdown. Again, I don't need to worry about specific file formats. As long as I'm writing in Markdown and I have Pandoc installed on my computer, I can open up my notes, my draft, my final text document, anywhere I want, and then export it to any format I want. And the Marked application is sort of a linchpin for this whole process because it can quickly show me a preview of the document I'm working with. Thanks for watching this video on Marked. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when I post new videos. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. If you have ideas for new videos, I'd love to hear them. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Nerdies, and check out the other videos that I've already posted here. There's a lot on Markdown, academic writing, and citations.